Hey guys, how you doing? Okay, so today, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about my thoughts so far on Medal of Honor Warfighter. Now, I gave you some footage uh, earlier today from my very first game, just to whet your appetite. And now I've been playing it pretty much, you know, most of the night. Um, and I think I can get a fairly good idea of what the game is like uh, to, give a, to give a judgment on it. Now, of course, it will take more time to get a proper long-term judgment, but I think I can get a good idea uh, and gist from what I've played so far. Now, first of all, let me say I am still learning the game, just like everyone else, so the maps are completely new to me. I don't really know my way around. Uh, you know, the guns are new to me. Um, I don't like a lot of the scopes that are on the guns by default. Uh, I tend to play with iron sights when I play a Battlefield 3 uh, or a red dot sight. I'm not a big fan of like hollow sights and things like that. Um, but I'm still, you know, learning the maps, um, so it's going to take a time to work out, uh, you know, a feel for the maps and see if there's any particular areas of the maps that, you know, uh, have choke points and stuff. Um, and basically, that's just going to take time playing the maps on the various game modes and seeing if there's any flaws in, you know, the map design and things like that, which there might be, but there might not be. Uh, so that's going to take some time, uh, you know, to, just to play through it and see. Um, first impressions of the game, though, I have to say, are pretty positive. You know, I really like the way the guns feel. Um, I do feel as though the weapons have more kick, um, you know, and almost character than the weapons on Battlefield 3. Or at least that's how I feel right now. Um, it does feel like right now there's no guns that are necessarily like uh, on a uh, you know on a rail, a bit like Battlefield can feel at times. Uh, you know, when Battlefield first came out, you had the you know the M16 with a suppressor which was uh, redonkulous. Um, but right now, the guns do feel like they've got a reasonable amount of kick to them. So that's a, that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing because it promotes more skilled play. Um, you know, There are a ton of customizable options as well for each weapon, ranging from aesthetics, which is camo, uh, which there's tons of, uh, to just a change in the stock, the muzzle, the clip. Uh, you know, there are, So there are plenty of ways to potentially make the weapon better or worse because some of these changes that you'll make, for instance the stock, the, the muzzle, etc will change the characteristics slightly of the gun, it might make it better at range or worse at range it might make it more agile, less agile, etc so a bit like the system in Battlefield 3, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time just to work out what attachments work best and with which gun to kind of get a feel of which class will be used the most you know, because there's six classes in the game, but we all know how this works. I mean, there will be a gun that people will use more than others. There will be. Um, you know, we'll we'll have a, a period now where people are learning the game. Then eventually, you're going to find that there's going to be a certain gun people are going to go to. The go-to gun. You know, the go-to class. It will develop. It's just a case of working out what it is, uh, you know, before everyone else. Um, so that is going to happen. Right now, I will say that I think I've already found an assault rifle that will prove to be the most popular. Uh, more on that coming in the next few days though, so stay tuned. Now the main teamwork mechanic in the game uh, is something that sets this game apart from others. It's called fire teams. Um, basically, you put together with another player in the server, or a friend if you join as a party, uh, and you play together as this fire team, uh, and you've got a fire team buddy. Now you can go to your fire team buddy to replenish both health and ammo, making teamwork pretty essential. Uh, you know, and staying together pretty vital as well. You know, if I go off and swan off to the other side of the map, that's fine. I might get a couple of kills, but if I'm really low on health and I'm not next to my fire team buddy, I'm gonna have to wait until I regen. If I'm next to him though, I can go to him, press E, uh, hold E down, and I will get health back automatically. He can do the same off me as well. Same for ammo. Not only that, I can spawn on him. Um, and if I die and he kills the person that killed me, I can spawn with no time or delay whatsoever. Uh, and the same for him, as I get tomahawked in the face. Um, so, so yeah, that's a really, really good feature. The only downside is, if, uh, like say I'm spawning there, if he is in danger, as the game the game works out if my buddy is in danger, since he's getting shot at or there's loads of enemies around, I can't spawn him. They put a two second delay. And that two seconds delay is every time he's in danger. So an enemy might be spotted, it puts two seconds on the timer. 
enemy might be spotted two seconds on the timer and so you've got to wait for your buddy to be in a safe area before it will let you spawn on him so it's his job because it'll come up on on the screen for instance stay in cover there fire team spawn I need to get to a safe place obviously I died so I'm useless I need to get to a safe place so my buddy can spawn on me so that's a cool feature it really does promote teamwork um, um, and it's something that uh, you need to bear in mind. I mean, because if you're running around, for instance, on your own, let's say you are running around on your own, you've gone on a bit of a mad run, um, the chances are you're going to come across people that are in twos um, because they're running together as a fire team partnership. Now, I, I just, if you see there, exactly, prime example, those two guys came through the door at the time, and since I've been playing this game, you'll find that most people will run around in twos. You'll always encounter sort of two people because they're running around together, uh, you know, sticking to the point of the game. So, sticking together is vital. You don't really want to be straying off too much. So in the game, there's there's lots of things to unlock. Uh, of course, you can unlock all the various Tier 1 countries, classes, um, or classes for the countries, uh, weapons as well. It's worth noting, though, with the the classes, you don't unlock them necessarily in order. And what I mean by that is... Let's say you start as a British SAS soldier, the Assaulter class. Now, you may think, well, you may not, this may, might just be my logic, that your next unlock would be uh, the, a class for the British SAS. So maybe I'll unlock the British Sniper next, then the British, um, uh, you know, the British um, Spec Ops, etc., etc. Then I'll unlock a different country. Um, it doesn't work like that. How it works is... You unlock a ran well, it's not random, it's predetermined. So, for instance, you might unlock the heavy gunner, the German heavy gunner. Then you might unlock the Russian sniper. Then you might unlock the USA Spec Ops, etc., etc. So it has a predetermined uh, path that it that it chooses. I think that's really to promote variety. I guess you're getting something different all the time rather than just sticking with, you know, with one country. So I think that probably is, you know, probably is a good idea. Now, mostly, I've been flicking between the Assaulter um, and the Spec Ops. Now, the Assaulter gives you a bit more oomph, you know, a bigger rifle. However, Spec Ops gives you uh, more speed and agility. And the sprint difference is very noticeable. Um, if you want more power, though, you can just go as the Point Man. Uh, they've got, you know, they're, they're the, as it were, Point Man. Um, and they've got um, harder hitting ammo as well that you can pick as their special ability. So, one thing I will say for the game though, compared to Battlefield, is that joining a game with a friend is a lot easier. Um, the game even supports uh, voicing game via the helper. I think it's using the battle log voice system that is in Battlefield. Um, but you can hear other people in game. For instance, on the final scoreboard, you'll hear other people. Um, it can be a bit annoying, but you can mute them. Um, and you've also got an in-game uh, server browser, which I didn't think they were going to put in. Um, I really didn't think they were going to put in. I thought they were just going to do the Battlefield thing and have a bare-bones menu and everything's done from Battle Log. Um, but it's great to see. It is great to see. There is no ping on the browser, though. Just a silly wireless connection icon instead. Um, and there's also no ping anywhere to be seen on the scoreboard either, which is a shame. Um, but at least there is some features in there. Um... And lastly, one thing I did want to focus on was the potential of this game to be a competitive game. Now, those of you who have been following my channel will know, of course, that I am a competitive player. Uh, I played Battlefield competitively for quite some time, you know, and, and Medal of Honor, I think, does have the potential to take over the reins from Battlefield as a competitive game. But it does have a main problem. It's got the same problem that Battlefield 3 had. There is no spectator mode in the game. Once again, EA have... Um, done an injustice I think and missed a trick uh, Danger Close uh, done the exact same thing as DICE there is no spectator in the game and if this game ever wanted to be a spectator game competitive game which it could do you know, this, I, I think this could be the next COD 4 potentially uh, but I'll talk about that in another video I'll go into a bit more depth and cover the home run game mode um, that is aimed at competitive play but back to the actual uh, game itself I've really enjoyed what I've played so far. I think it's been very good. There are some bugs that I've found here and there, um, but for the most part, it's been uh, a pleasurable experience. Um, and I think 
definitely worth getting a hold of. You know, I reckon you could pump easily a couple of couple of hundred hours into this and you know and have a good break from Battlefield Three. So like and subscribe as always guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.